Charlotte Perkins Gilman was an American woman born July 3, 1860. She was born in Hartford, Connecticut. Gilman had one sibling by the name of Thomas Addy and their father was not present in their lives. Gilman grew up in poverty and her education was very limited, however she attended Rhode Island School of Design for quite some time. And there is where she met her first husband Charles Walter Stetson. Nearly a decade later she started to experience depression and underwent a series of unusual treatments for it. This experience is believed to have inspired her best. Known short story The Yellow Wall. Paper 1892. Hi, as you can see in the image above me, this is Charlotte Perkin Gilman. And she is the writer of The Yellow Wall Paper, Women in Economics, and Three Thanksgiving. Charlotte Perkins, a woman herself, would mostly write about women's issues, mental illnesses, and suffrage. She would also mention labor, is labor issues and social reform. Even though her writing was published in 1892, like her um, short story, The Yellow Wallpaper, I feel like it, it can still be relevant for a modern audience because it talks about women's um, mental illness like postpartum depression. We are still learning about women's um, struggles and we are embracing them. Mental health disorders are the leading cause of disability worldwide and it mostly can occur on women. Finding out about the many mental disorders that there are can be difficult to understand the people that are going through it like their perspective. Charlotte didn't just write about mental disorders, but her most um, viewed story is the Yellow Wild Paper, which mentions a woman going through postpartum depression. Her other stories, like The Three Thanksgivings, talks about a woman becoming independent to save her house by herself with not the help of any other man's money or getting married to them for the benefit. She would also write about women in the economic industry, like when they were just getting their own jobs and being equally viewed to have a job as a man. Economic independency wasn't well known at the time for women, which was a struggle that she writes about and how even though being just a household mother or a stay-at-home wife can also affect um, the econ economics in life. She has many other stories, but within these three stories, I feel like she was just expressing how she felt as a woman, and I feel like most of her stories could be still relevant, and people, if they get to read them, would eventually enjoy them. <laughs> What is it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, have a seat. Mm -hmm. Um, so what did she come here to talk about? I came somewhere with It's almost up. I will give you the money, but I cannot help you. You should just marry me. You know how I feel about you. I can provide for you. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't think I want to do that because I'm not interested in you at all. You're a woman. How could you possibly make all this money by the month by yourself? Well, I do have a very smart brain, so I can do it. Whatever. Just have the money by the end of the month. Okay. Well, bye, Mr. Peter Bullet. <laughs> and you should find a way to make this money. Dear mother, we think it's time for you to come live with us. We miss you and you are only getting older. You should sell the house and live with me and my wife. We would love to have you. Love your son, Andrew. I hope mom gets this letter. It's really important. Let's give it to the mailman. Now, mother, you have to come to Thanksgiving with us this year. Joe wants you too. There's the little room upstairs. It's not very big. But we can put in a Franklin stove for you and make you pretty comfortable. I wish you would, Mother. We'd just love to have you here. You'd be such a comfort.
to me, and such a help with the babies, and Joe can help sell the house. I hope mom gets my message and comes to Thanksgiving with us. Can it be for Miss Morrison? Okay. Thank you for the mail. Have a nice day. You too. Um, I guess it's so sweet, but I just saw this one. Mrs. Morrison read it all through again and laid it down with her quiet, twinkly smile. Then she read Jean's. This quote is a metaphor because it compares her little smile into figurative smile. Her smile isn't quiet or shiny. It just means she has a bright smile. The first letter she reads is Andrew's letter, and she feels happy because Andrew's letter made her smile. She smiles brightly because Andrew's letter offers her income in his house just for her to stay at his house. Then she continues on to reading Jane's letter which was the same as Andrew's letters. Suddenly, she stopped short in the middle of a gray high sealed room and drew her head up proudly like a vicious queen. This statement is a simile because the new narrator is comparing Mrs. Morrison to a queen using the word like. Mrs. Morrison feels like a queen and at so the moment because she has idea on how to fix her income problems. She feels proud of herself because she didn't have to worry about her finding a solution anymore. I appreciate your friendly interest, Mr. Butt. You have been both kind. I found this sentence as a irony because she never appreciate Mr. Butt's interest because she didn't like Mr. Butt's nosiness. She only said that to be kind to Mr. Butt. When Mrs. Morrison gives the blue check to Mr. Butt, Mr. Butt was fe furious but also curious to know why or how she got her profit. Mrs. Morrison tries to not to answer his question. Because it's useless to try to make sense with Mr. Butt. Therefore, she kindly dismissed Mr. Butt out to the door. I think the tone is very motivational. Also, the theme is that to be not desperate. Because if you're desperate, you would most likely to what makes the short stories good writing. Well, I think that. Charlotte Perkins Gilman put into thoughts. Wait, where are you going? You're supposed to go to. The end.